The American Civil War was not a war between the states in his view. It was an insurgency. Firing upon Fort Sumter was a terrorist act. It was uh, an insurgency too great to be put down by ordinary means, and therefore, under the Constitution, he brought out 75,000 troops. He would have told you that the Confederate States of America was a, no country, it was a terrorist organization, resting upon an evil ideal. Uh, he would not negotiate with any Confederates just for that viewpoint. Uh, finally, he agreed to meet us with an old friend who laid out the possibilities of negotiation, and Lincoln said, stop right there, and told him what he thought of him, and the friend said, you mean, you say we're traitors and we, we should be hanged. Yes, you put it more briefly than I did, but that is exactly that. <laughs> and Lincoln responded forcibly. That's a superb question. One Congress was not in session. He didn't wait for them to get back. He called out the troops. Two, he had Maryland on the verge of seceding. And if Maryland had seceded, Virginia had already seceded, then the capital would have been surrounded by enemy territory. So he threw as many legislators from Maryland in jail without the right of habeas corpus as was necessary to keep them from seceding. So he acted far firmly and hard. He wasn't getting enough uh, money to support the war, so he went to the governors and said, you gotta raise the money from private sources. <coughs> and he communicated with the American people. He told them why they were fighting this war against their fellow Americans and why it was crucial. So you can look right back to the Civil War as an example of how you respond to an internal threat like that. Yes? Uh, in light of this last election, which uh, had, had a, a fairly impressive turnout, how would you compare that to, uh, two questions, how would you compare that to 33, or 32 and 36, between the country with its crisis? And secondly, uh, in your estimation, when was what were the last the last good wars? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, one, 1932 strikes me as being a lot like this last election, in that the American people registered a mandate for change. Now they didn't sweep out the Republicans as well as they did in 1932, but they registered a mandate for change and a mandate for action action now. And I think the President Obama will be judged by whether he takes action now. Uh, I guess part of the question there is, uh, what was the percentage of eligible voters that turned out during those I don't know. Years? I don't know. And that's a very good question. I don't know. That's an excellent question. Now, second though, when is the last good war? The war just arose. The just war. See? Just war is a philosophical term. It goes right back to Cicero. And there are three ways you have a just war. One, you are attacked. Two, your allies attack. Or three, you are removing an evil government. And it goes right back to the Athenian democracy. They believed if you allowed an evil <coughs> government to exist and oppress people, and you didn't remove it, you were guilty. So by the philosophical criteria, the war in Iraq was a just war. It moves about the same. Uh, so, there. Yeah. But the just war was not carried out, I think, ultimately, as successfully. And it was not communicated to the American people. You see, you, a great statesman must be able to communicate must inspire his fellow citizens to sacrifice. And if that's not done, then a leader will fail in a democracy. Yeah? Is there any difference between a just war and a wide war? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they are wise, preemptive wars that there are unwise preemptive wars. I have two questions. Yeah. You have repeatedly said from the introduction on about the necessity of not only studying but thinking historically. Every 
well, I always not say every, but many popular books today indicate that studies show that not only we refuse to teach history, most people don't know history, most people are proud of their ignorance of history. A recent poll at uh, University of Texas in Austin showed that 25% of the teachers, science teachers, thought that dinosaurs and human beings existed at the same time, even though there was a slight difference of 65 million years. Uh, it turns out two out of seven people know that we have five fundamental rights of the First Amendment of the Constitution of the Bill of Rights. Uh, it goes on and on about not one out of six know that we have three uh, branches of government that can name them. This is repeated national polls. We seem to be delighted in our ignorance of history and it's getting worse by the year. Any particular comment about that? Well, I think uh, our situation today is the best comment I can get uh, if you don't learn the lessons of history. But you're also not mentioning another equally uh, damaging fact, and that is our economic literacy. Uh, that may be in the immediate term more dangerous, that people don't understand what debt is, what credit charges are, and again, that is a failure not just of the schools, but of our most informative media. So uh, we do not think historically, and uh, we do not value historical knowledge the way the founders of our country did. And you, as individuals, you know you have the right to insist upon this in your schools. I mean, you always have the right. What's your second question? During your presentation, there seems to be sort of a mixed message. You started out at the very beginning talking about admiring Mr. Bush and his statements. Yet in the implementation of everything that has been transpired in the last eight years, many of us would feel it's a disaster. More than a disaster, a disgrace. The Justice Department comment, I think, is quite appropriate. Um, we have almost everybody in the top position in this country could conceivably be tried for some serious offense. So how can you say it's somebody you admire? I don't know. That's, I would absolutely not agree with what you said there. But uh, I admire him because I believe freedom is a noble idea. I believe you could advance freedom, and everybody really shared in this kind of blend of freedom. It is a, would be a wonderful thing, but it's not going to happen according to history. I, I am enough of a romantic to believe that if you struggle and strive, for a cause you believe to be noble and fail, that is much better than just not doing anything. I believe with Theodore Roosevelt that you go into the arena and you fight for it. And President Bush has gone into the arena and he has fought for his um, belief in freedom. Uh, with the Wilson in that's a failure. But on his desk, Franklin Roosevelt had a portrait of work with Wilson signed by Wilson to him when he was under Secretary of the Navy. And he was wanted to hold on for that fourth term so that he could get a United Nations in place the way that Wilson could not do with the League of Nations. So that light glimmers and glows. And uh, so President Bush has fought for what he believed in. Go back to your first question, so. Polls, you know, I am a person of some years. I have never been polled about anything. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about one of these polls that shows the uh, political illiteracy among our young people. The way, and it's quoted all the time by a group here in Washington that carried it out. They weren't allowed on campus to do this. You know, looked into this. They set up a booth outside of campus and they said, enter a raffle for an iPod if you will fill out these questions. Now I can, I can see my students how much time they would have actually given to filling out that little form. And that is used as a sign. Moreover, the only colleges they looked at were uh, basically on the East Coast and the West Coast as though nothing that happens in the real America could matter. <laughs> so there might be some students in Kansas who actually do know about dinosaurs and humans. <laughs> but those are very good questions. Yes? A uh, couple of uh, points. First of all, I have to agree with the gentleman. I'm a little confused by your uh, remarks of admiration for the first thing. But have I answered them for you now? Uh, to some extent. Yeah. To some extent. Uh, my question is, 